All right, so in today's lesson, we're going to be looking at defining polynomials. So polynomials can take the form of variables and constants in various combinations, or you might also see them as shapes. Uh, for example, these shapes, for like little squares, big squares and rectangles, uh, these are called algebra tiles, and we'll look at these more later on. All right, but before we get started, we need to know what are variables. So variables are the letters whose values are given to unknown real numbers. So, for example, uh, a lot of times when you see variables, they use just your regular letters in the alphabet, so like A, B, C, or X, Y, Z. And in some cases in mathematics, you might see some weird-looking letters or Greek letters, for example, alpha, beta, or theta, for example. Now, theta is a very common one that they typically use to measure angles. Um, but essentially, a variable is just some unknown number that is assigned value or it's an unknown that we're trying to find the value of. Okay, what about terms? So a term is a number or product of a number and the variables. And these variables are raised to a given power. Uh, so for example, if I look at 4, 4 would be an example of a term. You can almost think of it as 4 times x to the power of 0, and the x part would essentially just become 1 and disappear. Uh, 2 times x is an example of a term. In this case, the power would just be a 1, but whenever you have a power 1, it's essentially like an imaginary number. You don't really need to write it down. Uh, if we have negative 3 times x squared, that's a term. And lastly, if I have uh, negative 2 times x times y, this is also a term. So these are just four examples of terms. Uh, there is an infinite amount of terms you can create, uh, and we will look at some various examples later on. All right. Now we need to know what are coefficients. So the coefficient is a number that multiplies the variables or the letters that you see in a term or uh, a polynomial. So let's look at a term and some coefficients. So let's say I have 2 times x. So my coefficient is the number out in front, which is the number I'm multiplying my uh, variable by. So in this case, we're multiplying it by 2. So my coefficient is going to be 2. Now my next term, I have negative 3 times x squared. So my coefficient is going to be negative 3. And if I look at x over 4. This might be a little bit tricky, but this is essentially taking 1 quarter and you're timesing it by x. So my coefficient is a quarter. And what if I use decimals? So say if I have 1.25 and I'm timesing it by x and timesing it by y, it's just the decimal out in front, which is going to be my coefficient, so 1.25. Alright now, what is a constant? So if a term is just a number only, so you don't see any variables, it is called a constant. So, for example, just any old plain number like 2, negative 5, a quarter, could be a decimal. Uh, these are all constants. Now, there's also some special constants like pi, for example, so 3.14 and so on. Uh, it's a very special constant. Uh, it's used when uh, dealing with circles and areas and volumes. You see that a lot has many more applications and also the constant e so 2.71 uh, and so on so this constant you see a lot when dealing with interest and compounding and exponential growth so now what is a monomial so mono a monomial is an expression of the type so you take a times x to the power of n where a is a real number constant and n is a non-negative integer. So the non-negative integer is uh, very important. Uh, so for example, if I have 2 times x, negative 4, and 3 times y squared, these are all examples of monomials. So they're just one term. So if you have one term all by itself, that's a monomial. But now if you have examples like 1 over x, that's not an example of a uh, monomial. 
because we're not going to have a uh, positive uh, constant. So in this case, we're going to have a negative uh, exponent. So it's going to be negative 1. So that's not going to work because it has to be non-negative. Uh, and if I have the square root of x, that's also not going to work because the exponent in this case is going to be 1 half and x to the power of 2 thirds, that's a fraction. So since these aren't integers or negative numbers, these aren't examples of monomials. Now a binomial is very similar, but it's an algebraic expression of the sum or difference of two terms. So if I'm taking two monomials and combining them with addition or subtraction, that is what a binomial is. So for example, if I take 2x plus 1, I have two terms and I'm adding them. That's a binomial. If I take 3x squared and minus 3x, I have two terms and I'm subtracting them. Or if I have negative, or not negative, sorry, if I have a quarter times x squared plus 2y, this is also an example of a binomial. So it's just some expression, algebraic expression, with two terms in it. All right, what about a trinomial? So a trinomial you probably can guess it, uh, is an algebraic expression of the sum or difference of three terms. Okay, So for example, 2x squared plus 4x plus 6 would be one example, or negative 3x squared plus half x plus 5. These are all examples of trinomials. Now, all of these fall into the branch of polynomials, and a polynomial is just a monomial or a combination of sums or differences uh, of monomials put together. So you could have like one term, two term, three term, four terms, doesn't matter. This would be called a polynomial. Okay, so for example, 3x, it's a monomial, but it falls into the category of polynomials. Same with uh, 2x minus 1 and 4 times x squared uh, plus y plus 2. These are all different examples of polynomials. Now, we want to look at the degree and leading term of polynomials. So the degree of a term is the sum of the exponents of its variables. Okay. So given this, the leading term of a polynomial is the term with the highest degree. So the degree of a polynomial is the same as the degree of its leading term. So if I look at an example, let's say I have 5 times x squared minus 3x plus 4. And let's make a little table for this. So we got the term, the degree, leading term, and degree of polynomial. So if I look at 5x squared and negative 3x and 4 as my three terms for my polynomial. Uh, the degree of 5x squared is going to be 2 because that's what my exponent is. Now if you have multiple variables like x and y, you would have to add both the exponents together if you're multiplying uh, the variables. Now for our next term we have negative 3x, so the degree for this is going to be 1 because if you just have x all by itself, uh, there's an imaginary 1 as the exponent. And my constant 4 has an exponent of 0 because you can think of it as 4 times x to the power of 0, so the x part just goes away. Or any time you have a constant, the degree is always going to be 0. Now with this polynomial, the leading term is the one with the highest exponent. So that's going to be 5 times x squared. So looking at this leading term, that's going to give us the degree of our polynomial. So if I look at my exponent, it's 2, so the degree of this polynomial is 2. Okay. Now, for some people, uh, dealing with uh, variables and letters can be pretty easy. But for some learners, uh, using algebra tiles and seeing polynomials visually uh, can be help quite helpful for them. So we're going to draw out what algebra tiles look like in terms of polynomials. Okay, So depending on your book, they could be different, but I'm going to 
represent positive algebra tiles as white shaded tiles. So if you have a big square tile, that's going to be positive x squared. Now if you have a fatter rectangular tile that's facing vertically, that is going to be positive x times y. And if you have a little skinny rectangle that's facing vertically, that's positive x. And if I have a similar rectangle but it's facing horizontally, that's going to be positive y. And my little tiny square is positive 1. Now, for negative algebra tiles, I'm going to represent them as red instead of white. So just like before, uh, they all mean the same, except now for a big square, it's going to be negative x squared. For the vertical bigger rectangle, it's negative x times y. Uh, for the skinny vertical rectangle, we get negative x. For the horizontal red rectangle, we get negative y. And for the little red square, we get negative 1. Now, let's say I'm given the polynomial 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 2, and I want to write this down using algebra tiles. Okay, so first let's treat each term separately. So I want to look at 3x squared first. Now, this is positive. So using my definition of algebra tiles, we're saying positive ones are white. And since I'm dealing with x squared, I'm going to be drawing white squares, and I'm going to be drawing three of those. Okay, so I'm going to have three big white squares, and that's going to represent 3x squared. Now I need to look at my next term. So my next term is negative 4x. So since it's negative, we're going to be using red. And since we're dealing with x tiles in this case, I'm going to be drawing four vertical uh, skinny rectangles. And this will represent my negative 4x. And then lastly, we need to look at the positive 2. So the positive 2 is my constant, and constants in algebra tiles are represented by little squares. And since it's positive, I'm going to draw two little white squares. And this would be how I would write down this polynomial expression using algebra tiles. Now, not in this lesson, but later on, you can use algebra tiles for adding, subtracting, uh, multiplying, and dividing polynomials. But right now, we're just going to look at what they look like. All right. Now we need to know what like terms are. So when terms with the same variable are raised to the same power, they are called like terms. Okay. So the terms that are not like terms are called unlike terms, so basically the opposite. So let's look at some like terms. So if I have 3x and 5x, these are both x terms. Okay, so they're very similar, so say I wanted to add them. If I have 3x and I'm adding 5x, they're essentially the same type. So you can combine them together, so that would give us 8x. Or in the next example, I have negative 6 times x squared and 2 times x squared. These are x squared terms, so they are like terms. Or if I have 3 and 8, these are both constants and numbers, and I can combine these together with uh, any operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, unlike terms uh, would be examples like 6x and x squared. These are different. Like at x's and x squares, it'd be like comparing apples to oranges. They're not the same. Yes, they're fruit, but they're not the same type of fruit. Okay. Now, another example would be negative 3x and 4. So I have an x term and a constant, so they're not the same. So those would be examples of unlike terms. Uh, now, when we get to later on lessons, uh, we'll see how we can use uh, these definitions to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. Uh, but for now, hopefully you have a basic understanding of what simple polynomials and polynomial expressions look like.